In this video, I wanted to show you about how to use bullets in docs. A lot of these same rules apply for if you are using bullets in another uh, Google Drive file type. However, docs is the one you'll probably use it the most in, so that's where I wanted to do my example. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to make a list that I may want to add some bullets to. Oops. Can't spell today. Alright, so I have a list of items and I want to add bullets to these sub three items. Now you can add bullets by going up into your menu and in this case I'm zoomed in so it's under more and then the bullet option is under there. The default bullet is just a dot. So I had the one line selected, I selected the regular dot bullet and that added the bullet in. You can add bullets to multiple things if you select multiple rows and then you push the add bullet. Uh, one thing that you might want to think about doing when you are adding these bullets is that if you go to the drop down arrow right next to the bullets you can see some options for the styles of the bullets that you use. I like to use the stars a lot. Um, the arrows are kind of handy too. And that will change what your bullets look like at every level. Now you'll notice that I, I, it showed different levels and the bullets look different at all the different levels. So let's look at how you make a sub bullet. I'm going to go under item 1 and I'm going to add a sub item. Now right now it has the same indent as item 1 so it has the same bullet as item 1. To increase the indent you can use the increase indent option. Click that and it will increase the indent and make it a sub item. You can also decrease that indent if you would like as well and it will take it back to the beginning. You can do it as many times as you want and sub bullet away. There are some keyboard shortcuts for you to do this that you might want to start thinking about using. Um, if you tab on a line, then what that does is it increases the indent. And if you do a shift tab, it decreases the indent. Now, these same rules all apply for if you want to number your list of items. So I am going to select my items. And when I go up to more, I'm not going to choose bullets this time, I'm going to choose a numbered list. And what that's going to do is number my list of items, and then it has my sub bullet with an A. Again, you have options. So instead of just going straight to the first one, I'm going to use the drop down, and I can choose how I want my numbered list to look. I may want it to be lettered. I may want to use the parentheses instead of the dot. Um, I may want to use Roman numerals. And that just depends on whatever it is that your document needs. Now, I wanted to show you a list that I had already made down here. And it has a lot of different things on there. And um, it's a list of colors. And I have some warm colors. And I have some cool colors. And you can see that having them all at the same level really isn't doing me any good. So bullets are a very handy way to organize your document. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bullet to everything. So I'm going to select all of it. I'm going to go to more. And I'm going to choose to use that one looks all already in. Since I'm talking about colors, I'll use this one. Now I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts so you can see how this works. I want to indent further all the warm colors. So I'm going to select them all and then I'm going to hit tab. It's going to indent them in. I'm going to do the same thing for my cool colors. And I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to indent them in one level. Now let's say I hit, accidentally hit tab twice. Oh no, remember that if you use shift tab, it will move it back. And what's really cool is these keyboard shortcuts work when you have multiple things selected. Uh, I'm going to change all of these to a numbered list so I can show you one last thing that you can do with bullets and numbered lists. Go into more numbers, I'm just going to select the default one. So right now, I have it numbered 1, 2 in that list. So let's say I wanted to separate these. I wanted the cool colors to be their own list. 
Right now, it's listed as number two because it's attached to the number one. If you right click on any numbered list, anywhere in a numbered list, one of your options is to restart numbering. If you select that option, you can change what you restart numbering at. So let's say I wanted these are all the warm colors, one, two, three, four, five. These are all the cool colors, one, two, three, four, five. I could start at one again, and that would restart my numbered list. This is nice because sometimes it remembers numbering throughout the entire document, and if you are making a worksheet or a list of questions and you want to have separators, you may want to restart numbering at certain times in your document. So that's all about using bullets and numbered lists in Google Docs. Remember that these uh, cool tips apply to all the other Google file types. And if nothing else, you guys learned your cool keyboard shortcuts. I am a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts. Remember tab will indent and shift tab will unindent or decrease the indent. I'm making a quick addendum video that I'm tacking on to the end of my bullets uh, video because I wanted to show you one last thing related to bullets. This is actually something that you could make a whole video about because you can do this when you're not using bullets as well, but for our purposes, it's important to see how they work with bullets. So we're going to look at the indent. Right now, I have my little list of items that has the Roman numerals and the sub-bullet letters. And when I click on each of these different items, you can see up at the top, there's this blue bar and blue triangle that move. That's because those are marking where the indents are happening. And so if you have just a regular blank line, both the indents are going to be right over there at the left. It's going to be the left indent. And then the um, bar shows the first line indent. So here we are on item one, and you can see that that line indent is a little bit uh, in from what the normal list of items is. You can also see that the left indent is coming in, and what that's doing is it's moving the bullet over. So I'm on item one right now, and let's say I want to change the indents. If I change the left indent by dragging the triangle around, it's also going to change the, the uh, first line indent for me. So let's say I want them to be over here at one, and that moves them both over there to one inch for the triangle, and then representatively the difference between the two is still what it started as. Now if I want to move the first line indent I can click on and hold on the rectangle and move that left and right. So I could have it start over sort of where the other guys started and probably a little bit more, there we go, and then I could have that big giant space because I had already moved that left indent. Now, chances are you're not going to want to change a lot of the default indents because they're pretty nicely set up, but now you know how you can do that. It's just playing around with them to see what works best for you. So that is my little addendum to using lists and bullets in Google Docs.